Hello, welcome to Advent in Brief from Charles Street Methodist Church in Newark. You might remember those of you that watched the Charles Street in Brief series that we ran during lockdown, that we stopped those in August, but we did say that there would be special series coming up where we resurrected it as it were and started doing the short meditation, short times of worship and teaching again. And this being Advent, we've decided to start one now. And the theme for the next four weeks, one episode per week, is surprise, surprise. And we're talking about people who, in the first chapter of Luke, are surprised by what they find from God during the Advent season, during the lead up to the birth of Jesus. So we'll have four different people speaking. It's me this week, Ian Matthews next. Um, the week after that, Bruce Garrison is going to give us present presentation. And then the final week four will be our own minister, Nathan Fowler. So we've got four weeks and they'll be all issued hopefully every Monday morning, technical errors permitting. So we're starting off by looking right at the start of Luke chapter one. And reading from verse one, Luke says, Since many have undertaken to set down an orderly account of events that have been fulfilled amongst us, just as they were handed on to us by those from the beginning, who were eyewitnesses and servants of the word, I too decided after investigating everything carefully from the very first to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the truth concerning the things about which you've been instructed. Well, pretty clear there that Luke, who is a doctor, has decided that he's going to write what he considers to be an orderly, well-researched and careful account which he's passing on to his associate Theophilus to try and make sure that the facts are represented and that people know clearly what happened. It goes on in verse 5 to write about the times in which Jesus was born. And he starts by saying, In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah. Now to us, this just gives it some sort of historical perspective. But to the people of the ancient world, they would have known just what it meant that this happened during the reign of Herod. King Herod was a bad guy, a really bad guy. I think we all know the story of the massacre of the innocents that Herod decided that he would put to death all male children to try and kill the infant Jesus. Well, it seems that in the contemporary records of that time, the historical records, that that barely gets a mention. That was one of the least of his atrocities. So. He's a really bad guy. And this is the time into which Jesus is born. And this is the time into which Zechariah, who we're talking today, was a priest. So Mary, Joseph, Elizabeth, Zechariah, they were all around in this time when Herod, the bad guy, was around. Not only that, but they were living under Roman occupation, so it was pretty rough. But into this context, we find that there is a couple Zechariah and Elizabeth, who heard from God. When you hear about these two, um, obviously we know that Zechariah was a priest, but Luke tells us also that um, Elizabeth's dad had been a priest. So they had a history of being in touch with God and serving God. But despite this, they had no children and they were barren. And they were often praying and asking God why and asking God for a miracle, but they had no children. Now to be without children, or barren as it's referred to in the Bible, was really a, felt to be a punishment by God, and people were ostracized in that situation. But the Bible actually uses a lot of women who are in that situation. So, for instance, Abraham's wife, Sarah, she was barren for a long time, as was Isaac's wife, Rebecca, Samuel's mum, Hannah, she was um, without child for a very, very long time until Samuel was born. And even Samson's mum, who unfortunately we don't get a name of, but Samson's mum didn't have a child until Samson came along. So it seems that women who couldn't have children or who hadn't had children were often chosen by God for special purposes. So I think there we probably have the, the first surprise in that it was a woman who was looked down on by society for not having a child, who was chosen by God. Indeed, the, the examples that we've given there, it was often people who 
were considered to be barren, who were chosen by God to, for a special purpose. So then we come to Zechariah the priest. He was one of 18,000 priests, and all those priests would have wanted to have the opportunity to go into the Holy of Holies, the most intimate part of the temple, and to burn incense to honour God. And actually on this occasion, his, his name comes up as it were, the, the lot was cast, and it was Zechariah who was chosen to do that. And what happens next is going to be described in the cartoon that we're now going to watch. Well, it was at the hour of prayer, and Zechariah was selected to light the incense, you know, in the temple, alone. Suddenly, a man appears, dressed all in white. Was he tall, with blonde hair? <coughs> Gabriel, he calls himself. Zechariah, he says, your prayers have been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you will name him John. He will turn many back to God to prepare them for the Messiah. But my wife is old and barren, says he. Because you do not believe my words, you will be unable to speak until these things take place. from the cartoon that there was a major surprise for Zechariah when he went into the temple that day. The first surprise that he would have known is that God actually hadn't appeared in that temple or hadn't sent an angel to the people in the temple for 400 years. So it kind of wasn't the sort of thing that was happening every day and it would have been a bit of a shock. The second was that the message that the angel gave, it wasn't one for the whole of the Israel people, it was one specifically for Zechariah and his wife. It was to tell them that they were going to have a child, that despite all that had gone before and having no children, despite all their prayers and their goodly living, that actually this now was the occasion. They were going to have a child. So you can imagine that Zechariah was hugely surprised and I think his reaction shows that. Zechariah was very human. He, he showed his surprise, didn't he? And he basically said to the angel, I can't believe it. And as a result, he was struck dumb. It kind of feels rough, really, that for showing a human reaction, Zechariah was struck dumb. But in a way, that was all part of it, and that the fact that he was dumb actually had an impact on a lot of other people. And it also really just showed how intent God was in showing the importance of this birth, the birth of John the Baptist, who was going to be born to Zechariah and Elizabeth. So... How is this relevant for us? Well, I think the first thing is to think about our world and how messy it is, how difficult, you know, all the things that are going on in the world which are less than perfect, the, the, the COVID pandemic, the migration of people across the world, the fighting, the wars that are going on, the, the bloodshed, the, the dreadful things that have gone throughout history, you know, I mean, Herod seems to be a bad guy, and he actually was probably worse than people like Hitler and Stalin and Pol Pot, those people who we consider to be dreadful people. But God appeared in that time, and he chose that time, not only to give this gift to Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth, but also to bring Jesus into the world, to bring a baby through Mary and Joseph into the world, and that baby was Jesus the saviour of the world. The other thing I think is worth noting is that Zechariah and Elizabeth were classed as upright people. They were people who really did have a strong faith in God and they continued to pray and they continued to worship God despite what really society was throwing at them because they didn't have children and they must have thought, why? Why is this happening? I don't understand it. But they remained upright. And as a result of that, they were chosen by God. And they were chosen by God not just to give birth to any child, but to give birth to a special child, a gift from God, 
who was part of the Christmas story. You know, John the Baptist was going to pave the way for Jesus, going to prepare a straight way in the wilderness and show people who it was that was to come, Jesus. So God chose them not only as somebody special, but as somebody who was marked out to be the parents of a very, very special baby who was to lead a special life and to be an important part of the story of Christmas. And the final thing I think is that really we can never know what God's timing is. Elizabeth, Zechariah, they must have wondered were they ever going to get a child and it sounds like they'd given up and were just accepting that well it isn't going to be. And actually what it was was that God was choosing them to be a specific part of a bigger picture, a very specific picture and it was worth the wait. God's timing was right. So, certainly Zechariah was surprised. I imagine that when he got home, Elizabeth was pretty surprised. Um, these people were surprised by God, by God's message for them, by God's timing, and by God's great gift to them in providing for them a child. So as we start to think about Christmas and what's coming, what's going to surprise you? What's going to surprise you this Advent, the time when so often we're getting stuck in the busyness of all the things going on? Perhaps we're getting stressed that Covid is going to spoil what we consider to be a good Christmas and that this Christmas is going to be very similar to the last. Well, we don't know that. But we do know that God is full of surprises and that he'll, he'll be there with us, the same way he was with Zechariah and Elizabeth. And that nothing, however bad the world seems to be, is too difficult for God to fulfil his plan. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the surprise that Zechariah and Elizabeth got when the angel told them that they were going to give birth to a child. And we thank you, Lord, that you do bring surprises. But we thank you most that your timing is perfect that you can move beyond what seem like impossible situations and that you can change things and you can use people specifically to do your will. Help us not to get bogged down in the details, in the, the things that Christmas involves for us as, as individuals, but to keep a focus on you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.